You know how there are those days where nothing is going right and it's all awful and it feels like the world is falling apart gradually? Well, today I have a story where a photographer was having one of those days and it wasn't her fault, but we're going to go into it. But first, my name is Katie Sauter. I am a wedding planner and I have a free wedding planning timeline linked in the description below. I also have a link in the description below where you can submit your own wedding horror stories or other related stories for me to read on my channel. Check it out. Would love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to smash smooch that like button and put a ring on that subscribe, but keep it PG for me as always. Okay, right? Let's dive in. So I shot a wedding a few weeks ago and oh my God, I just need a brain dump about it as I am editing it. From the start, it was chaos to the extreme. I turned up at the bride's mother's house and turns out her mother is an agoraphobic and hasn't left the house for 10 years. Obviously, this meant a morning of breakdowns from the mother, but instead of having a calm environment, there were three sisters who all added more drama constantly, shouting, arguing, ignoring the bride's wishes to stay calm. Can't you pull it together for just one day? Just one day. I raged about this recently in my anyone but you movie reaction. It's like, yeah, can't you just pull it together for one day? Just be an adult, 24 hours, not even. You can go to bed within that time. Anyway, there was also 17 children in the house. Whoa, 17 is a lot. <laughs> Big family, all right. There was also around 17 children in the house, running everywhere, screaming, shouting, adding more stress for the bride's mother and bride. We ran behind because the bride was having her makeup done by her sister. Her other sister had taken her eyelashes and left the house. Everything was hectic. What? I don't, th I'm a little confused by that entire the whole thing. Was it like the bride was having her makeup done by her sister? Oh, the sister took the bride's eyelashes? I think that's what she means. That seems really petty and unnecessary. Maybe it was an accident? Benefit of the doubt? I kept my cool, just chatted to the bride and cracked on with capturing what I could capture. She was finally ready. I was able to get portraits and then drive to the church to be met with, oh my God, the worst vicar I have ever Ever encountered. This vicar said I could stand at the altar for the bride to walk down the aisle only. Fine, I did that. But then she changed her mind whilst she walked down the aisle, shouting at me to get off the altar and move in front of everyone. Are you kidding me? Why is the vicar in control of the photographer and where the photographer is supposed to be? Honestly, the photographer has free reign. Like, as long as they are not like blocking people's view, none of this makes sense. None of this makes sense. All right, let's keep going. She also would not let the bride walk down the aisle last. She, what? Wait, what? She made her walk first behind her, the vicar, and then the bridal party behind her. It's like, is the vicar, is this the vicar's wedding? Meant that I couldn't get any shots of anyone walking down the aisle because it was impossible after she pushed me off the altar. Yep, she grabbed and moved me. Oh my God. This is, this is audacity at its finest. She then kept the bride and groom as close to her as physically possible, whilst I kept walking around the church as quietly as possible to attempt to get their faces. I still managed it, got some really beautiful shots, so I'm happy. We then came out of the church, got into confetti lines, and guess what? One of the sisters forgot the confetti, so had to go back to the mother's house to get it. Oh boy, so so off she went, was gone around 20 minutes. So everyone was just waiting in line for 20 minutes. Finally got back, or got ready for confetti, turn around and the mother of the bride has collapsed outside of the church. No, <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what to do. So I just asked the bride and groom how I could help. If they wanted me to tell everyone to go to the reception, they said no, because they want confetti. So we did confetti. And then I directed everyone to the reception for reception drinks. So what happened to the mom? She collapsed. Finally got to the reception an hour later with around 30 minutes until speeches are due because at this point we're running almost two hours late due to everyone's constant drama. But we needed to do group shots. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, okay. Keep it together, daughter. Keep it together. Obviously mom was meant to be in them, almost everyone. And she wasn't feeling up to it. No kidding. 
no kidding she's agoraphobic hasn't left the house in 10 years and and now now like she's collapsed she collapsed of course she's not feeling up to it so i just decided to crack on with the groom's family i got them done so quick and his family were so relaxed and lovely the mother was now feeling better and wanted to do their families so we started with them with the 17 children who were not controllable at all like they wouldn't listen stand or even smile they were all over six so it was not like they were super small it was ridiculous i just started editing their pics and there isn't a great one in any of them that i can even swap the faces around so i'm just going with it oh yeah i always forget that photographers can swap faces from one photo to the other it's like oh this one was the better photo but this person had their eyes closed i can replace that it's like it's too bad that's not like they, they couldn't do that anyways we ran out of time and had to sit for speeches and food i was glad to take a break from them and go back to them so it's a few hours later and i want to get the final couple of group shots done for them i am met with the rudest people ever a man who said i am not being told what to do by a woman with a camera honestly i was like fuck this just stand where you like i'll snap the shot <laughs> Yeah, I would do that one too. I was then taken aside by a family member of the groom and told to get the first dance done and leave. Just go, because there will be fighting later and it's gonna be awful. <laughs> this family. God bless the bride and groom. I hope that they ended up okay, because it sounds like their family wasn't very helpful. She continues by writing, I have shot over 100 weddings. This has been the second worst ever. Wait, I wanna hear your first worst. No matter how much you get to know your clients, you don't always know what their friends and family are going to be like. If this would have happened five years ago, I would have been doubting myself, but it was all out of my control and the shots I have are good. They won't make my portfolio though. Remember, not everyone we book will be our people. That is so true. Cause um, yeah, sometimes you just are on the phone with someone and you're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I, I just don't think we're a good fit. And, and that's like, sometimes you just have to say that you're not the right fit. Not everyone is your client. Um, and sometimes it's better to save your own sanity. Very true. What do you think about this whole thing? Comment down below. Aha! I feel so bad for this photographer. Ultimately, I just, I, I feel for them that all of that was so outside of their control and they did their best, it sounds like, with a nightmare vicar. Um, I did have to look up vicar before this. It's kind of like a pastor. If you weren't aware, maybe you are. Maybe you're more theologically educated than I am. Um, <laughs> if you liked this content, consider watching some of my other videos or, or maybe submit your own story for me to read. Maybe I will enjoy it enough to actually include it on my YouTube channel. But until then, check out some of my other stuff.